Alright, so I'm getting ready to build my zero dollar uh, furnace for multi-purpose use, possibly to melt down some aluminum, possibly to fire some clay, possibly to test making some steam uh, for using steam powered electricity. In any case, here are these two barrels that I got, one small, one larger. Actually, this one's just kind of medium size, 55 gallon drum. And this one over here, I got, uh, already has the bottom out of it, so it's gonna serve my purpose pretty well. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this barrel inside this one, like that. And it's gonna create a little space between the two barrels, and I'm gonna fill that with dirt. Uh, I'm gonna cut a hole in the bottom of this other one and bend up the tabs and make an airflow come through there. And then I'm gonna cut this barrel off the same height as the other one, or I might leave it um, to make a firing chamber uh, in the upper area. So I'll try leaving it first. I can always cut it off later, and uh, we'll see how, how, how it goes. So I'll keep you posted. See you on the next video. All right, so you can see I got this barrel on top of the other barrel, just so how I can see they can line up. And uh, I went to market here, which you can barely see, but you can also see that this barrel already has some rings, and a ring uh, nearly of the same size as this barrel that's already here. So uh, what I'm going to do next, I'm going to cut a hole in here, and I'm going to make some flaps, tabs that bend up, and then I can screw it to the other barrel, and then I'll have a hole here the same size as the other barrel uh, for air to flow into rocket stove style. All right, I'll see you on the next video. All right, here's a picture of the barrel. You can see I got it turned upside down, and I got some holes cut around the in a circle here. Now I can get my tool in there and start cutting away with the snips. And uh, then I'll make some radial cuts along there so I can fold, fold the flaps down and tie it into that barrel over there. All right. All right, so here's my barrel inside a barrel. Uh, you can see I got the bottom cut out. I got all these fins made and bent over. They're bent over on top of that other barrel in there. And I'm gonna take some screws now and screw through all these little tabs. So those barrels will be interlocked. And then I'm gonna fill this space with uh, insulation. Uh, in this case, I'm just gonna use dirt. Uh, try that out, see how it works. All right, so here's my rocket stove, hybrid rocket stove, and uh, you can see in there I've got my product of my first day of welding class. Made this crucible here, and I uh, also made these tongs. Oop, here we go. And pull that out of there. And uh, we're going to fill it with some charcoal. Got that charcoal right there. And uh, we'll see if we can melt some aluminum. Got some scraps right over here. Uh, not all that's aluminum, but some of it is. And uh, we'll throw it in the crucible and fire it up and see what we get. All right, so we got a little fire going and the uh, rocket stove action. And it looks like looks like the airflow is not nearly as good with the charcoal briquettes as it was working with uh, when I was using sticks stacked upright. Uh, sticks stacked upright had a really great airflow through there and it was really raging uh, but this looks like uh, the charcoal stacked in there makes a lot of different constricting passageways so the airflow isn't just roaring up through there right. so I just had that little fire going that I showed you and then basically I pushed all the coals out to the side put my crucible inside there and then I stacked I just poured the rest of the bag of charcoal in around my crucible there you can see it's smoking quite a lot, uh, but I think once the fire takes off through the coals that I just put up there that the smoke or the temperature will come up quite a bit and that smoke is going to die down. We'll see. I'll keep you All right, folks. I turned my fan on and uh, it's a whole different scene over here. Uh, I'll show you here. I'll turn off the fan one time. Here's my fan. Oh, got some sparks. Good thing the rain just soaked this whole hillside here recently. Wow, now I turned the fan off and it's still rocking pretty good here. So we'll see how it goes. Alright, as you can see I've got the crucible kind of ensconced in flames there and we got a chock full of aluminum scraps that I just cut up from my bin of scraps there and uh, it's going pretty good so now that the 
everything is caught on, I'm going to add more coal so that the coal is basically all around the crucible and the fire fusion area is exactly where the crucible is. Uh, I did notice when I was getting in there to add on more scraps that it does look like the crucible is starting to get red hot at the bottom. Um, and so that's encouraging. All right, stay tuned. All right, here we go. We got the stove refilled with uh, charcoal here. And you can hear it crackling away. And the fire has died down a lot, but I'm just going to kick on my fan here and it should commence to roaring. And then we ought to see some aluminum melting here in the next few minutes. Here we go. Got the fan on low now. Here, the fire starting to pick up in there. Oh yeah. All right, we'll be right back. All right, it's going off now. You can see I got uh, the fire color has definitely changed. It's got a little tinge of mauve in there or a little purple. And uh, I don't really think I need to be running the um, fan, but I could be. Uh, it really cranks out the heat when I'm doing that. So I'm just letting the uh, fire work its magic here for the slow heat for a little while. I'm going to let it build up all over that crucible and then I'll uh, turn it up more once it looks like we're getting closer to the high heat area. All right, so it's been a little while now and uh, all my little aluminum scraps are much, much shorter. Uh, if I could get the camera above there, you might be able to see down in the bottom to some uh, more molten aluminum, but uh, I'm not wanting to have a molten camera. So I'm going to stay back just far enough and uh, keep you posted. I'm going to feed some more scraps in there and uh, see how much aluminum we can get on a first pour. All right, I'm on my third load of aluminum and uh, my second load of added hardwood lump charred coal and uh, it's going like the dickens. So it's molten, it's red down there at the bottom of my crucible and the aluminum is melting very slowly. I was doing this without the fan at all and uh, now that the temp is pretty close to where we want it to be, I kicked it up to high to hopefully melt this stuff a little faster and get us to a high heat for the pour. So we'll be doing that soon, stay tuned. All right, just for fun, we got it on high fan right now. She's a roaring. So hopefully in just a few minutes of this, we ought to have that aluminum melted down. So uh, yeah, it's definitely burning hot. I think we're almost there. All right, well, here's the destruction here. You can see my crucible. And I uh, got a fair amount of dross. Also had dropped a couple of charcoal briquettes inside there while I was filling it up, so, uh, Got those out at the end. Here you are. There you can see the embers are still burning there. Actually, you probably can't, but anyway, they are. And then uh, this was my first ingot pour. And as you can see, I got a little overzealous on the pour there and poured way too much. And it's blooshed out all around the side. Uh, but we got two and a half other good ingots there. So pretty happy with that for my first pour. And you can see. Here's my furnace burning down. If I had any of my pottery ready to go to fire, I could set it down in there, uh, but I don't. So maybe next time uh, we'll be ready. And all, all in all, I used not quite two of these bags of Royal Oak hardwood lump charcoal and uh, a little bit of battery fan power and uh, a lot of time actually not on the fan. Um, I was basically doing a preheat cycle that included not much fan and then when I got close then I cranked the fan up for the last bit of the heating. Alright, well that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, keep on trucking.
All right, so there you can see my crucible stand is red hot. We definitely have exceeded the 1100 degrees to melt that aluminum down. That's so great. All right, well, as you can see, uh, my operation worked. Here's my first pour. Got a success with my zero dollar furnace, rocket stove style. And I got it shutting down now on cool down mode, but uh, you can see the fire is still happening down there. And uh, my crucible is in there. Let me pull it out. There you go. You can see the crucible I made with my handy tongs. That's pretty good, this guy. And uh, I see you got this tang on the back. So I can uh, easily pour using this other tool right here. And uh, I made the mistake of using this tool also as my dross scraper. I failed to make a dross scraper when I was making all this other stuff, and I see it's all kind of caked with nastiness, made it a little hard to put it through the tang right there. But uh, anyway, we did it, and we got those, my first ingots. Woohoo! All righty. Well, uh, more to come. We'll see what I actually pour when it's time to make something. I think first I'm going to go through a couple rounds of mel melting down some scrap and uh, get a little bit of aluminum on hand that's ready to pour into some kind of project thing. So uh, that's it for now. I'll keep you posted.